Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to discuss about the upgrade and migration. So how we can upgrade our UCM cluster or particular publisher or subscriber or I am in present sir. So I will be discussing the methods how we can upgrade or migrate the server or cluster. Okay, so how we can upgrade it? There are two ways I can say. Uh, as of now, like the standard upgrade and refresh upgrade. So these are the two upgrades which we can perform to upgrade from one version to another version, right? And another one is a cluster wide upgrade that is that will be there after performing an upgrade to 12.5 version, right? So if you are on virtualized COCM 12.5 only, then you can do this simplified upgrade simplified or standard. this is also standard but this is a simplified upgrade and you can update it as a cluster wide right so if you want to uh, upgrade your cluster from 12.5 to 12.5 plus either it could be 12.6 7 something and anyone right so you can uh, you can use the simplified upgrade but if you are running a version of 11.x 10.x or or something else then you can do this standard upgrade or the refresh upgrade. It can be on it like maybe your COCM is on virtual machine, like you're using a VMware or it's on MCS, right? So you can do perform these things, standard upgrade and the refresh upgrade, right? So what are the upgrade and migration methods? Like we will be discussing about the COCM version builds and requirements upgrade migration methods and tools, how we can upgrade it and PCD upgrades and migration, right? So first let's, let me just show it to you what are the CUCM version and the builds. So these are the CUCM versions. I can say 11.5, uh, I just took it from the 11.5. It can be like 10.x, 9.x, 8.x, and even, right? So uh, as of now, 12.5, 12.51, this version is there. This is the CUCM version actually. And this is the CUCM build 12.5.1. something, right? This is the CUCM build. And what does this naming convention or I can say the numbering convention means? So this 12, the first 12, this is a major version, right? So if somebody is asking, what's the CUCM version you are using? That is a 12. That is a major version, right? And the minor version is this one, the next one, that is dot five. This is the minor version, 12.5. Five. Dot five is a minor version. This one indicates a, a maintenance release, like what, what are the maintenance things? And then we have dot one one nine zero zero something. These are the, uh, I can say the build patches. Like if you are, um, uh, if you are upgrading a patch, if you are just want to upgrade something or bug fixes. So, this will be the CUCM build. It will increase actually, or maybe they will give you a new build version. So this one indicates, I believe this will indicate the build patch. And after that, these indicates like the, like if there is any bug in that particular version or build, then they will fix it. And then they will just give you a new number for that bug fix, right? Then uh, build requirements like build matching, you can see the servers in CUCM cluster, it will match this particular same thing, which would be, which we just discussed like a 12.5.1.1000-22, 26, anything like this. This is the example. Upgrade during an installation, then it will show this one like 11.5 to 11.5 newer or 12.5 to 14 something. CUCM and IMP server, same thing. Servers in IMP cluster, that would be the same as servers in CUCM cluster, right? CUCM and device packs, this is the uh, like 11 or 10.5.2, 10.5.1, like this, right? So now uh, from the 12.5, they separated the ISO files, like before 12.5, like from 7.x to 11.x there will only be one ISO file for CUCM as well as Unity connection. But after 11.5, like for 12.5 or I can say 12.x, there will be a different ISO file for CUCM and a different ISO file for Unity connection, right? So now we have uh, the methods and 
tools for upgrade like how we can upgrade the particular version so this is appliance like whether it can be on your mcs it can be uh, virtualized so if you are using nine eight seven or six version like these versions what upgrade method you can use and if you are using this eight nine ten eleven twelve version on vmware virtualized what upgrade tool you can use right like for this one vmware so let's discuss about the methods as well as tools so here method is we can say uh, upgrade and like migration method so upgrade method we have standard upgrade as well as refresh upgrade right this is the normal one and this simplified upgrade will come after upgrading it to 12.5 in this simplified upgrade you can upgrade the whole cluster in one in one go right and to perform this standard or refresh upgrade or simplified upgrade, you can use this particular tool, Unified CM OS Admin. Like on your CSM, you are you are just opening Cisco Unified Call Manager, like a communication manager, right? To upgrade, you need to open Unified CM OS Admin. You can, uh, if you want to upgrade it, you need to go to that drop down menu and choose this Cisco Unified CM OS Admin, and then you can just login with the admin credentials right and in the pcd upgrade uh, upgrade or migrate we have we do have the two things pc for pcd upgrade we have standard and refresh upgrade and pcd migrate and for this we should be having an external tool or vm like pcd is prime collaboration deployment okay so now let's discuss about the OS admin types of upgrades, the same like standard and refresh upgrade and then the simplified one. Okay, so in standard upgrade, uh, what we can do, we, we will just formally uh, it called it as L2 upgrade as well. In standard upgrade, your active partition will run while upgrading software is being installed on an inactive partition on a per node basis. That means if you are doing a standard upgrade or if it chooses a standard upgrade, then you will be able to use your unified CM, right? In the standard upgrade, you can use your CM and it's opposite to the refresh upgrade. In the refresh upgrade, your server will be down if you are upgrading something, right? You cannot use your call manager at that point of time when your server is upgrading, right? So in standard upgrade, it's a low complexity with medium level of downtime. And standard upgrade is between CUCM versions with the same major Linux version. That means CUCM 10 to 11.5 or 12.5 or to 12.51, this one, right? It should be between CUCM versions with the same major Linux versions, major Linux version. I'll show it to you as well. And in the refresh upgrade, your server will be down while upgrading software, right? Medium complexity with longer downtime because it takes so much time after because it takes like you need to reboot as well. It will switch as well, right? And it is between CUCM versions with different major Linux versions. So if you have a different major Linux versions, then it will take a refresh upgrade. Otherwise, it will take a standard upgrade. And for example, you are doing it from 8.6 to 11.5 or 9.1 to 11.5, right? Okay, so what's in the simplified upgrade? So simplified upgrade will be available when you already, when you're already on 12.5, right? So in this active partition is running while upgrade software is being installed on inactive and this is a cluster wide, right? And it's low complexity with shortest possible downtime. This is longer downtime, this is medium right and we can use this from cucm versions 12.5 or later with same major linux version like 12.51 to 12.5 su1 or su2 right then uh, how it will like uh, decide whether it needs to do a standard upgrade or refresh upgrade i believe i already discussed but let me show you if you are on existing cucm and if you are upgrading it if you are upgrading to the same major OS version, then yes, it will perform a standard upgrade. If you are not upgrading to the same major OS version, then it will take a refresh upgrade. We already discussed it in the previous slides. 
then we have this one standard upgrade cluster upgrade sequence for least service impact like so as of now we are doing a standard upgrade now what would be the sequence to upgrade all other servers as well like you are doing it on publisher first then subscriber then i am and present servers publisher and subscribers right so <clears throat> first uh, you will do a standard upgrade manual on the cucm publisher right so once it's done you will do the same things on cucm primary subscriber cucm secondary subscribers and i am and presence publisher right you will do a manual upgrade and after that, you will do a manual upgrade on I am and presence subscribe, right? So why we are doing this? Because first we are doing publisher, then everything will work on subscribers. If we are doing it on subscribers and primary publisher, prim not primary publisher, just a publisher of I am and presence, then it will work with the second uh, subscriber of I am and presence and the publisher as well. So everything will work, right? And then we will do a manual upgrade of I am and presence subscriber, right? After that, <clears throat> what you need to do, the first is the switch. That means you need to switch the versions first on your CUCM publisher, right? Switch, that means it will switch from previous version to an upgraded version, correct? And next part would be like CUCM primary subscriber, you can say there is a star. That means phone registration will be done using cm groups or disable cm service on all other sub cucm subscriber correct and then you will do you will perform the same switch versions on the secondary subscriber and the im and presence publisher this one right so as of now we upgraded it to we switch the version on the publisher cucm and on the subscribers as well or the im and presence publisher as well now we will do a database sync on the publisher, on the secondary subscriber, and we now we will switch the version on I am and presence subscriber. Earlier we did the C, uh, I am and presence publisher switch on the I am and presence, right? Now we will perform a switch version on I am and presence subscriber, correct? After that, because DB sync has already happened, DB sync is already there now. Now we will switch version on the CUCM primary subscriber and we will do a DB sync on primary and oh, prime not primary uh, publisher and subscriber of IM and presence and after that we will do a DB sync of primary uh, subscriber and secondary subscribers and the publisher. So this is the sequence for upgrade of your whole cluster with the least service impact right in the same way for the refresh upgrade and upgrade sequence for least service impact the same way you can uh, do it in this way like in this whole chart you can just post the video here and you can uh, learn it yourself as well and you can note it down as well right first there's a manual upgrade for the publisher then there will be a manual of secondary subscriber and publisher then manual of primary and subscribe primary cucm subscriber and the IAM and present subscriber, then we will switch the versions, then database sync and all other things, right? So I hope you will be able to understand from this table itself. Now, uh, for the cluster upgrade sequence for shortest upgrade time, that is for the least service impact. Now, this is for the shortest upgrade time. Now, what you will do in this manual of uh, manual upgrade of publisher, and then next step would be manual upgrade of subscribers, I am and presence publisher, then manual upgrade of I am and presence subscribe, then switch the version on your publisher, then switch the version on, on your subscriber and I am and presence publisher, same way database sync, then switch subscriber of I am and presence, then same database sync, right? This is just for the reference. Another one, you can do it in this way as well. You can first switch this one, switch this one, then you can do databasing, then switch I am in, place, I am in presence publisher, I am in presence publisher, then databasing. You can do it in this way as well. These are just for the reference purposes, right? So these were the standard and refresh upgrade methods. Now we are moving into the simplified upgrade. That is, you will be able to see this simplified upgrade post 12.5 because there are options which will show in the 12.5 version only. I will show it to you, right? So you will do the same on Unified CMOS Admin.
right? In the simplified upgrade, you what you need to do? You need to upgrade, like uh, download the files, reboot, and then the switch version. This just the normal things you need to do. Just download the ISO files, upgrade it, reboot it, and then switch, right? You can do it through a web UI or CLI. It's a cluster wide operation, right? It's a upgrade, then reboot, then switch version. Mini built in PCD or a station tool on CUCM publisher for its own CUCM and Diamond Pens cluster. Okay, it's nothing. Right? So now you can see if we are doing a simplified upgrade, we will do it only on the publisher, right? On the publisher, on the Cisco Unified OS admin, you will be able to see under software upgrades this option install slash upgrade cluster. This one, right? Install slash upgrade cluster. This is a cluster wide, right? So now uh, on you, you, you can't see this on the subscriber. Here you can see on the subscriber, you will be able to see only install slash upgrade. And on the publisher, you will be able to see install slash upgrade cluster and reboot cluster, right? Now use OS admin or publisher to initiate cluster upgrade, the same thing, yeah. And minimize going to all other subscribers as previous support. So in the standard or refresh upgrades, we need to go to the particular servers and do the installation or upgrading. In this, you don't need to go anywhere else. So now on the subscriber, what you need to do on the subscriber, you can use this, use download credentials from publisher. If this option is checked, then everything should be done. Software login, use download credentials from publisher, right? And on the publisher, what you need to do uh, while installing or upgrading the software, you need to uh, add these details, source, directory, server, username, username, password, transfer protocol, SMTP server, or email destination. Right? So <clears throat> now, publisher, uh, how publisher can get details from the SFTP? Publisher secure FTP server and SFTP credential can be used for all subscribers for upgrade and it will minimize going to all other subscribers. Okay. So uh, and now we are at the, we are at your uh, uh, publisher and once we click on this install slash upgrade cluster, you will be able to see these options, which I already just discussed in the previous slide, right? So here you can see the source, you need to enter remote file system, directory, you need to mention the path actually, the SFTP server or username and password for that, transfer protocol and SMTP server or email destination, right? So now you need to download the files, files first, right? So just uncheck these one, continue with upgrade after download or switch version, uncheck and then continue. After that, from here, you need to select COOP or ISO file to download, right? So you can just uh, use this one COP file and then what it will do, it will download it here, right? Right, so now you can see it here, it is downloading it and it's showing download complete. And you don't need to click next or cancel because if you do it, then it will install it, right? Now, uh, now it's downloaded it. Now you are at upgrade option. You need to click on this one, continue with upgrade after download just click on this one right so once you click on this one you will perform you will just click on next and you will be able to see this particular file and in the i am in presence option your upgrades you can just choose do not upgrade i am in presence not if you don't want to upgrade it right so you can choose to not install or upgrade i am in presence or CCM. you can you can choose it there right after that it will just download it it is showing download complete and then there will be a overall upgrade process. You can see it here. It's showing if you are choosing IAM and presence to download or not download, install or not install, that will be there. It depends on you what you are choosing. As it's showing IAM and presence publisher, subscriber, ECUC and subscriber, CUC and publisher, CUC and subscriber, right? So it's showing the process is three by 21. So it's already installing it, right? As here, you can see all nots executed in parallel and it's installing this particular file, right? You can see it here. I am in there here. You can see uh, after 
after like a uh, couple of minutes it will show the progress here as well overall upgrade process now after that you will be able to see after a uh, couple of hours again or minutes again you will be able to see the main thing is you can see the uh, increase in this particular uh, time in this particular step i can say like there are 21 steps that needs to be performed but it's a six or seven or eight stage right now here 15 and once it's complete it will not show anything and then it will show in the description upgrade complete here you can see upgrade successful right so upgrades are kicked off in parallel on all nodes this is one db replication is set up on inactive and CUCM, I am present sync on inactive. Okay, now what we need to do, install or upgrade is already done. Now we need to reboot the cluster, right? So you don't need to go to any other subscriber. You just need to go to the publisher and then you can perform the reboot cluster option. After performing this reboot cluster, you will be able to see this thing like which thing which version or which server you need to reboot first it depends on the time like what we like what i just showed you in the previous slides in the in the example right so first you want to batch one that is using publisher then you want to uh reboot like i am in presence publisher subscriber and then subscribe then it will perform the step on these three then it will perform a reboot on the i am in presence subscribe here right so you can you can just configure it in your way right use us or admin or publisher to initiate cluster restart or switch version right minimize going to all other previous subscribers as a previous approach right so you can restart it or you can switch the versions you can do whatever you want to do right right in in like in this way you can adjust patches to minimize delta on outage right and then you can just switch the versions once you switch the versions, it will show switch complete or in progress. Once everything is completed, it will show switch complete on all the servers, right? So if it shows switch started, then you need to log back after publisher on the publisher. Yeah, the same thing, I, it's just a normal thing. What we did, we just, we first did the install upgrade cluster and then we rebooted the cluster, right? It's just the normal things. Now we have PCD upgrades and migration. That is prime collaboration deployment. In this, we can do upgrade as well as migrate. That is a standard as well as refresh upgrade and the migration, right? So here in this example, you can see uh, these are our MCS, UCM 6 version, 7 version, 8 version or 9 version, right? This is this is your ESXi host, this is your PCD, and this is your workstation, right? So what is PCD? PCD is a VMware VApp used for management of Cisco collaboration applications, right? What are the applications? Either it could be CUCM, Unity, Presence, UCCX, or CER, right? And we can perform these management tasks here, upgrade, switch version, server restart, readdress, install and migrate it's are based on collaboration application and version right so vmware vapp is pre-configured virtual machine with os and pcd application so if you are installing this vmware vapp it will be pre-configured with the virtual machine virtual machine with os and pcd application these are already there right so this is an ova file for pcd and bootable iso available via port or tech it's not posted on C, uh, cco right so update isos are posted on cco okay so what are the requirements for this pcd environmental requirements so you need an ovf file to create anything or to like i can say if you already worked on the uh, vmware then you should know what's the main purpose of that ovf file it's just a template i can say right so on the pcd this should be the like 12.6 version why am i why am i saying 12.6 version because we are just discussing about the 12.6 environment requirements right so virtual cpu to virtual ram disk guest if you want to increase you can increase virtual cpu and disk as well depends on the requirements now on the pcd esx esxi version to run pcd on that should be 6.5 6.7 
previously it was 6.0 but it's end of life as of now like end of general support for 6.0 version is march 12 2020 right so now it should be like 6.5 or 6.7 so uh, what are the new features this is a new features overview the task naming batch cop file install task chaining as well auto kick off auto kick off pcd task based on successful completion of a prior pcd task so what it means you don't need to install or upgrade the things by going to different different servers or by going to different different time i can say you can just uh, you can just perform these tasks and schedule it once the previous task completed then another task will start right so in this way these are the examples like batch cop install so you are just uh, installing a cop file in this particular example then fresh install followed by a batch install that means it will first fresh install or migrate something like a boot up with the bootable iso file then it will perform an upgrade task with the cop files here direct upgrade followed by batch install cops batch upgrade three clusters in series so it will do an upgrade on first cluster once it's complete it will do an upgrade on third second one once it's completed it will do an upgrade on third one as well right so we can chain it right that's why it is naming named as task chaining as well. you can do direct upgrade then patch upgrade as well you can do a fresh install followed by patch as well right like in this way upload cop files to the upgrade folder and then use external sftp server how can you do that on the cisco prime collaboration deployment you can uh, you can perform a upgrade or migrate so once you click on this upgrade you will be able to see this one add upgrade task right so here you need to in this upgrade task you need to choose a nickname for that upgrade task like you are saying multiple cop install like if you are installing multiple cop files you need to upload it and then you can just give a name any any name right you can upload the files then you can click on next right and after that you will be able to see you need to perform this task manual like you need to start the task manually and upgrade it like you can add the uh, again add the next available or the next scheduled tasks right so create a task to start manually and then next task choose choose dependent task in this like direct upgrade followed by batch install cop files like in this way right so here you can do uh, you can do a manual start and then you can add the upgrade tasks here right add upgrade task you need to choose upgrade type whether it could be a iso file or a cop file like in previous step we were at step 1 you just give the name right in the step 2 you can choose whether it's an iso you are you want to do perform on the iso file or you want to just install uh, the cop files right cluster product you can choose it no dependency you can just uncheck this one because there's a no dependent it's not dependent on that so now you can select the dependent tasks as well and then here you can perform the things here you can see it as well like this one is already running and this will run after once it's complete the first one right then we have this thing pcd assisted upgrades and migration like uh, let me just show it to you upgrade and migration the versions so pcd upgrade so if we are virtual to virtual then you can perform cucm versions 8.x i can say to 12.x2 target version to 10.x till 12.5 you can perform pcd upgrade if it's a virtual to virtual if it's physical to virtual or virtual to virtual as well then you can if you want to do a pcd migration then you can do it from cucm version 6.x to 12.x to target version of 10.x to 12.x as well if you are performing a pcd migration right in the simple migration source network setting like ip address or host names it you can use the same and in the network migration you can use the new network settings ip addresses or host names right okay then we have this pcd migration task overview cucm on mcs or virtualized right then uh, it's on pcd and you can migrate it to your virtualized cucm so if you are performing this bare metal CUCM like on MCS to virtualize CUCM, you need to install this COP files 
to source servers to export the data. And then you can build a new migration cluster. This manual task required to first deploy, obvious. Yes, you need to create new VMs on your particular VM. And you can use the OVF files to create that particular thing, right? And it will export and import data. You can use same or different destination IP addresses or host name. You can use same source or uh, destination migration cluster. It can be behind NAT. And you can schedule it as well, schedule or immediate execution also. Okay, so PCD migration task overview. First, what you need to do, you need to discover source CUCM clusters. Like these are the source CUCM clusters, CUCM 6.x, 7.x, 8.x, anything, right? Then what you need to do, you need to add target ESXi hosts. That means this one, target ESXi hosts. And then what you need to do, you need to add CUCM bootable ISOs to that particular SFTP server or to external NFS server, right? On this particular, you need to add CUCM bootable ISO files, right? This one, it could be from DVD, it could be from another external file server like remote file system. We already choose it while we were installing it or upgrading the cluster, right? And then on the fourth step, Deploy empty CUCM VMs on the target ESXi hosts using applicable OVs. That means here you can perform, you can choose the OVA templates to create VMs, right? And then you can define a migration destination cluster. Here you can map source nodes to destination virtual VMs, right? The fifth step, you can configure the migration. And then you can add the migration tasks. In this, you will choose source cluster, destination cluster, migration files, that is bootable ISOs, and then you can schedule the start time as well, right? Now we have this one, upgrade and migration tools for this one, uh, collaboration applications for OS admin, CUCM and IAM and presence only. And on the, uh, if we talk about PCD, we can perform CUCM, IAM and presence, CUC as well as CUCCX also, but, there will be no migration option, right? If at a star, that is a no migration option. On the OS admin, you can do CUCM and IAM and present. Size of deployment, small to medium, you can do it on OS admin. If it's a medium to large, you can do it on PC. That is a virtual. Cluster level task, you can perform upgrade, restart and switch version. Here, what you can do on PCD, upgrade, migrate, restart, switch version, fresh installation, and readdressing as well. Tool resource, it's a native and built-in, but it's an external virtual machine. That PCD is an external virtual machine. So these just are the things uh, of pre-upgrade checks or work in progress and subject to change. So these are the few things you can check, like check the network services or connectivity, licensing, password length restriction, VMware tools, version compatibility, and of disk space as well. These are the pre-upgrade checks. So if you are upgrading something, you need to check these things first, right? If you don't have a disk space, then how you can do the, how you can perform the uh, upgrade or migrate, right? Check DB contains source data, cluster manager, authentication and database replication. Backup should be configured as well. You need to serve, compare service status, compare installed cops and locals. So these all are the things you can perform before doing an upgrade, right? I hope you learned something from this video. If if you have any questions, queries, just let me know in the comment section, okay? So if you are new to my channel, then please like, share, and subscribe my channel as well, and press the bell icon so that you can get notifications of all my upcoming videos. Thank you.